Good morning, and thank you for joining us for week three of the 2023 Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Weekly Football Coaches Video Conference. I am Patricia Porter Mayfield, Associate Commissioner for the MEAC, and I will serve as the moderator and host of today's interviews. Before we begin, I would like to go over today's procedures. The conference will begin with the MEAC notes featuring conference highlights, upcoming games, players of the weeks, and weekly accolades. Afterwards, we will ask each head coach questions about the previous matchups, the upcoming games, followed by questions from the media. To ask a question, simply press or simply click the raise hand feature and remain muted until you are introduced. At this time, the MEC notes will be brought to you by Director of Strategic Communications, Jeff Cunningham. Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you, Patricia. Week two of the 2023 MEAC football season saw three of the conference's six teams come away victorious, two of them against in-state rivals. Otto Coons threw three touchdown passes as Norfolk State defeated Hampton 31-23 in the annual Battle of the Bay. And for the second straight year, North Carolina Central took the Aggie Eagle Classic, defeating North Carolina A&T State 30-16 after a pair of rushing touchdowns each from Davius Richard and Latrell Collier, and an Eagles defense that held A&T scoreless in the second half. Howard University won its home opener Saturday evening, defeating Morehouse College 65-19 behind three touchdown passes from Quinn Williams and a combined four rushing scores from the Bison offense. In other football action, Morgan State's upset bid came up just short as Akron used a late defensive score to defeat the Bears 28-24, or 24-21, excuse me. Army defeated Delaware State 57-0, and South Carolina State fell 48-13 to Georgia Tech. In MEAC Volleyball, Coppin State has won seven straight matches and is a conference best 8-1 and one. after this past week's action. The Eagles defeated Loyola, Maryland, Lafayette, and Penn, and along the way, redshirt senior libero Ashley Roman became the MEAC's all-time leader in career digs. She currently has 2,104 for her career. Maryland Eastern Shore is now over 500 for the season after wins this past weekend over Gardner-Webb and Quinnipiac. And Norfolk State picked up its first win of the 2023 season with a five-set victory over UNC Wilmington. In other action, Morgan State defeated Manhattan in four sets, and Delaware State got back in the win column, defeating Binghamton in four sets. The MEAC announced this last week that men's basketball student-athlete Yoro Sidibe from Norfolk State has been named the conference's Male Student Athlete of the Year for the 2022-23 academic year. Sidibe is the first Norfolk State student-athlete to earn the honor. Check out MEACsports.com later today for the conference's football and volleyball players of the week. You can also visit MEACsports.com for more information on the conference and its 14 sponsored sports. And follow the MEAC on social media at MEAC Sports on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. And subscribe to the MEAC Digital Network on YouTube. Patricia? Thanks, Jeff. It is now time to begin our weekly video teleconference. Our first interview is with Howard head coach, Larry Scott. Good morning, Coach Scott. Good morning, how are we doing? I'm doing well, Coach, how about yourself? Doing great, doing great. Well, Coach, dominating performance last week over in Morehouse College. Can you assess your team's performance in the matchup? Yeah, I think we came out uh, with some energy, right? The first home game, it was a night game, first time under our new lights, and uh, it was kind of like a sellout crowd, so it was a, a heck of a game environment, even through the rain and those type of things. So I think the kids came out and played with a lot of energy. Uh, they're excited to play again. Uh, we let one go the week before um, when we simply went, you know, went and outplayed the team, but gave up two, you know, two touchdowns on the in the kicking game on special teams, and they knew um, that we let one get away. Uh, and we wanted to come out and just play to our standard, uh, play to who we are, uh, clean up our, you know, our penalties and do all those things. And we did that. Um, and, and had some success. So I uh, was uh, pleased with the way we came out and played. Well, Coach, the Bison appeared to be clicking on all cylinders, particularly on both sides of the ball. What achievements were you most satisfied with? I think just, uh, you know, we want to go out and do, and, and when you play football, you want to play clean, right? Um, and I think we were able to go out and play clean, um, play with, uh, you know, cut down on our uh, penalties. Uh, tackle well, um, execute well, eliminate MAs and do things like that. Uh, and so we were able to do that. And we played fast, we played clean, we played efficient. 
Uh, and that's what I wanted us to see see us come out and do and, and start to establish as we continue to build through the season. So uh, that's probably what I was most proud of. And then they, you know, they defended playing at home. Uh, playing at home is a big deal. And, and, um, and playing here at, at Howard on the Hill in the Mecca uh, is something I want our guys to have a lot of passion and purpose for doing and doing at a high level. Uh, and they came out and did that. Ahead, Coach, you have the Battle of the HUs. What is the outlook for this matchup? Uh, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a tough matchup. Uh, it's going to be a physical game, uh, always is. Uh, Hampton plays a physical brand and style of football uh, that, uh, you know, leads, you know, to what we want to be. Uh, we want to be, a, you know, play a physical brand of football. Uh, so it's going to be a, a tough matchup, uh, a physical matchup. It's always fun, right, for those these two schools and brands to get together. Uh, we get a chance to do it at Audi Field here in D.C. at 3.30 in a prime time spot. So uh, we're definitely excited about it and, uh, and already busy at work getting prepared for it. Well, thanks, Coach Scott. That concludes all of my questions this morning. But if I can now ask you to stick around to have some questions from the media. As a reminder, please use the raise hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. Our first question for Coach Scott this morning comes from Dr. Cavill. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Doc. How we doing? I'm good. I'm good. Apologize for missing last week. I was traveling. And I wanted to get Hello. in here and ask the question. Appreciate that about Quentin Williams. Uh, just yeah. his progression. Obviously had a solid, really a big game in terms of his performance. But over the last couple of weeks and coming into the season, what are your thoughts on Quentin Williams? Uh, just the maturity. That's the step he's taking uh, from a maturity standpoint. Uh, leadership uh, standpoint with the running the offense and uh, kind of now as me being the, the sole, you know, play caller, uh, we're in rhythm. You know, we're really very much so on the same page, kind of understanding why we're doing some of the things we're doing. Uh, we're very much, you know, he's he's a big communication piece of what he's seeing and how things are going. So uh, it's it's become a much smoother transition and transference of information uh, from me to him and what we're thinking and what we're doing. So. Um, I think it's just been a maturity, uh, just from a maturity standpoint and ownership in the offense and uh, knowing what we're trying to do when we're trying to do it is a big thing. So he kind of understands the progression and, and how it builds. And so he can stay poised, stay patient, let the game come to him uh, and see the big picture. And therefore, you're seeing the production and his numbers go, you know, go up and uh, being very efficient with the ball, taking care of the football. We went through two games and had no turnovers on offense. Uh, and that's something that we want to continue to build on. If we can take care of the ball, uh, be efficient with what we're doing, uh, we're going to always give ourselves a chance to score, you know, score a lot of points uh, and win ball games. One follow-up question. Um, obviously, it's special about that maturity. Oftentimes, you see it in a senior uh, with the leadership that you spoke about, uh, Mr. Williams. But on to the next matchup, uh, obviously, coined as the Battle of the HU. It's against Hampton. Yeah. Hadn't had a lot of success against them lately, but this team comes in with a lot of expectations. You focused uh, with part of the question coming in this about the aggressiveness of your defense. What are some uh, individuals we can look forward to in terms of that matchup looking at, uh, particularly what happens seeking to run the ball, both through the quarterback and running back? How are you going to look at attacking that from the defensive side of the ball? Uh, and that's why I started out by saying it's going it's going to be a game of growth. it's going to be a tough game it's going to be a game built around toughness it's going to be a physical game uh, it's going to be a lot of scrimmage game uh, on both sides of the ball um, I think they're going to try to establish the run as we do we try to establish the run and uh, do those things and, and um, with that case I think the matchup is going to be watching the front sevens of both teams uh, in there and in, in that respect and then when the ball's out on the perimeter uh, you know you know what's going on out there but it's going to be one and played in the trenches, uh, this game would be. And I, and I think uh, that's something that they rely heavily on, uh, what we rely on. So I think it's going to be a front seven matchup. Uh, and that's that's what uh, people should have their eyes on as to watch and see what the key is to, to who comes out of this thing victorious. With that said, I'll keep my eyes on the trenches. Thank you, Coach. Look forward to the weekend matchup. Thank you. I appreciate it, Doc. Our next question is from Nate Henry. Good morning, everyone. How you doing, Coach? Good morning, Nate. How are we doing? Doing well. Great. Great. Nathaniel Henry, Howard University Sports Media. Uh, first question, what are some of the concerns as you um, face Hampton U? Well, just the uh, matchups across the front. You know, some of this that uh, we're getting into right now. Got into it a little bit yesterday, and now we're, you know, both feet in right now. 
uh, in our preparation. So just making sure, you know, that we're, where we are from a matchup standpoint uh, on the fronts and, and personnel and some things and, and looking at their personnel and uh, kind of figuring out what's going on. I know, you know, they, they're always able to change over the roster a little bit year in and year out with a, with transfers. And so sometimes what you're watching from a year ago and what you're getting this year and all those type of things is always kind of tough to match, you know, to match them up uh, a little bit with trying to figure out the personnel. So just getting through that, figuring out the personnel, uh, seeing where the best matchups are going to be, the advantageous matchups are going to be for us as we put together, you know, our plan on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. Um, and more importantly, you know, when you do that, and it's that type of football game, special teams and uh, the war in special teams is going to be critical as the field position and, and those type of things too. So um, the, those trench games come down to who's playing really well on uh, special teams uh, for field position purposes as well. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, my last question. During your term at Howard University, um, what have you learned about the rivalry and what it means to both institutions? Oh, man, it's bragging rights for, for a whole year, right? It, it used to be something different when they were both in the same conference and uh, obviously had to see each other, with, which had, you know, standing, you know, implications within the standings of the conference and things like that. Now it's just pure uh, community. It's pure, you know, bragging rights. It's pure just uh, rivalries, rival people going after each other. You look in the DMV area, uh, you have a lot of Hampton grads. You have a lot of Hampton alums uh, and those type of things, and, and they're mixed in with a lot of Howard alums. Uh, so that, that's a year right. You know, that's a whole year of bragging rights and, and being able to talk a little trash to each other throughout the year. So it's it's a fun week. Um, it's also a very competitive week, and, and, and it's one that uh, we know is important to us. It's important to our alumni. It's important to our university. It's important to our brand. Uh, we're going to go out and, and give our very best effort to represent it well and come home with a win this time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Our next question is from Ty Miller. Hey, Coach. Good morning. How are you doing? Ty, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good, Coach. Uh, after this weekend's game, Coach Pronti said that he needs to focus more on his running game. So uh, I just have one question here. Your thoughts on Elijah Burris, who Coach Pronti says he wants to give the ball to more, and also a bookend running back in Darren Butts. Your, your thoughts on that two-headed monster that the uh, Pirates have? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would. If I was Coach Prote, I definitely agree with him. Uh, when you have those two guys that, you know, kind of uh, complement each other very well, uh, I, I think the more times the ball is in their hands, the better chance you got for good things to happen. Uh, so um, I, I totally agree with them. They both they have different styles, but yet uh, they, they still both can, you know, break open games and, and, and uh, you know, have explosive plays uh, with the ball under their arm. So, uh, I agree with him, and that's something that we got to be honed in on. Obviously, uh, like I said earlier, it's going to be a game that's won in the trenches. Uh, we're going to have to line up and be able to stop that and, and be able to contain the run uh, and, and make them one-dimensional um, and then play our game on defense. Um, and I think if we do that, we're going to give ourselves a heck of a chance to, to win this game. Yeah, you gave me an idea about a follow-up question, Coach. In terms of the trenches and ball possession, how key will time of possession be in this game for both offenses? I mean, sometimes I think time of possession is something that's really overrated um, as to, you know, success. If you're, if you're a team that's having explosive plays and moving the ball down the field and coming away with points, uh, time of possession really, you know, it, it really doesn't matter as long as you're scoring on drives and coming away with points. Uh, where, it's, where it comes into is if you're involved in a kind of a, a back and forth battle of, you know, three and outs and a lot of punts and, and, and those type of things. And the special teams game comes into play really right there. Then it's about, you know, who's, you know, holding on to the ball, but converting first downs and moving the chains and, you know, you know, having short fields and all those type of things. I think that's when the time of possession uh, comes into play a little bit more. But I think um, at the end of the day, as long as you go out and you're scoring points, you're putting points on the board, uh, you're going to put pressure on the other team uh, to to match that, to give themselves a chance to win. So I think it's just that, uh, dictated by the flow of the game, uh, kind of what's happening, how well we're playing on special teams and on defense as to how important it is to play more possession type ball or, or you know, open it up and be more um, explosive to try to create explosive and chunk plays uh, in your offense. So I, I think that's a, it becomes very relative based on the game. Okay, Coach. Thanks so a lot and good, good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. The Yard HBCU Sports is up next. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Um. You spoke about uh, putting up points, and you guys did just that this past Saturday, scoring on nine of uh, not straight drives and ten of your first eleven. 
Um, are you actually familiar on the last time that Howard's program has put up uh, 60 plus points? Uh, no, I, I was not aware and I really hadn't paid attention <laughs> uh, to, to, to that stat. Um, honestly, I, I'm just, we're just trying to make sure we're, we're handling our business right now and uh, scoring every time that we get an opportunity to. And that's one of the things we talk about on offense is every, every, every possession go out with a mindset that we expect to score. Uh, not that we're, you know, uh, oh, if good things happen or we do this, we do that. No, we go out with the intentions of scoring every time we have the football. So um, if, if that means it's a game where we score 65 points, great. If it's a game where we score 17 and we win the game, great. Uh, at the end of the day, that, that's what matters most is to have one more point than the, the opponent uh, and find ways to win the game. But if we're capable of being that explosive and, and putting up that many points, then, hey, why not go just be who we are week in and week out? Don't play down or play up to your opponent. Uh, play to what our standard is and our expectation is, and that's to go out and score every drive. Okay. And um, with that said, for the second consecutive week, once again, you're having issues with uh, special teams. How do you guys address that with uh, Hampton coming into town this week? Uh, definitely something we got to uh, clean up. It was a little bit better than it was last week. Uh, it was just getting, you know, working through and coaching through some young, talented personnel. Uh, that once they once they got it, they, they're, they're going to be just fine. What you can't coach is talent. Um, and we have some guys with some talent that need to understand and be held to a, a standard of what it means to go out and um, own their roles, uh, have only have great ownership in their roles and execute their roles and it be demanded of by the coaching staff and by their teammates, their peers, the locker room, and those type of things that they do it and do it right. Uh, so we, we're going to continue to work through that and get those things cleaned up so we can be playing on all three cylinders, right, OD and K. So uh, definitely something we got to keep showing up uh, with our holding situation and those type of things on extra point uh, and those things. But we, we, we're definitely working through it. We're going to get it cleaned up and, and, and get it all rocking together. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Good luck this week. Thank you. Appreciate it. Charles Bishop. Good morning, Coach Scott. Good morning. How you doing? Uh, Charles Bishop, uh, inside the HBCU Sports Lab. And I wanted to uh, just ask you real quickly uh, your thoughts of Hampton's quarterback, uh, Christopher Zealous, uh, who uh, is uh, obviously quarterback's team, but he's also part of the Hampton Russian attack as well. Yeah, and that's what makes it makes him dangerous, right? You know, a guy that can run around and uh, use his legs, even in the passing game, scramble around, get first downs. Uh, it could be, you know, quarterback design runs and those type of things. So, he definitely another guy besides the two backs and, and the host of the talent they have on the perimeter. Uh, another guy that you got to be aware of, know where he is, what he's doing, and, and have a plan to um, contain him and have a quarterback player that's there and designed to, to take care of him and know what he's doing. So uh, at the end of the day, it puts a lot of stress on your design and your scheme and what you got to do to make sure you, uh, you're in position to uh, contain this offense. A quick follow-up question is uh, how do you, I, I guess, uh, ask your defensive lineman to, to sort of harness – the pass rush, if you will, to sort of keep him contained within the body. Right. You have to have discipline in your rush lanes. Understand your rush lanes. Understand your rush fits, what we're trying to do, whether we're pressuring or whether we're just straight four-man, you know, four-down four, four down rushing and those things have great, great discipline uh, in your rush lanes. If, you, if it's your job to contain inside out, that makes sure you're disciplined enough to do that and contain the quarterback, keep him inside and in front of you. Uh, and if it's your job to, you know, stay inside and, and, and push the pocket and stay where you need to so things can fit the way it's supposed to fit, then do that. So it's going to take great discipline, right? Great discipline and then some playmaking ability. If, you, if you're if you there at the point of attack and you can get off a block and make a play, get off a block and make a play. Uh, so at the end of the day, it's, it's just the discipline that it's going to take within the structure and scheme of the defense uh, to make sure that we do a great job of containing it. Sure thing. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our final question for Coach Scott this morning comes from James Hill. Good morning, Coach. I hope you and everybody at Howard are well. Talk a little bit about Mr. Williams, Mr. Hawthorne, and Mr. Smith. Very effective. Uh, they really got after it. You guys really put some uh, some numbers on the board, if you will. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a host of talent on our on our offense, a host of skill. I mean, you can go down the line. You know, you, you still have Jamar Ebron. You still have – one Williams, you still have, you know, Eden James, you still have uh, Ian Wheeler, you still have Jared Hunter. We, we have a host of guys that we can put in uh, a host of different spots based on matchups and things like that. 
uh, to exploit their, you know, to exploit the defense and and and, and build on our guys' uh, talent level and skill set. So, um, yeah, those guys really were putting made some plays. They were putting spots to make some plays when the number was called and they made the plays. Uh, and I think that's the challenge, you know, to all of our guys when your number's called, uh, go make a play because we have a host of other guys that can make plays as well. So when you use your your opportunities up and your numbers call, uh, go do that. And as for Q, it's just managing the game and doing a really good job of protecting the football and letting the guys with their skill set around him uh, do the rest. You do, you do the mental part. Uh, make sure we're where we need to be. Get them the football and let those guys go to work. So uh, that's kind of the mantra we've been carrying on offense and. Uh, the ball's going to get around. It's going to be spread it around. Uh, and when it's your opportunity to impact the game, will be impactful. Coach, in closing, I have family members who uh, live around the corner on 7th, and they always talked about the Howard and Hampton rivalry, and, and family members have attended and been a part of both institutions. Just share your closing thoughts on, on again, a big weekend coming up, a big-time rivalry, and, and oftentimes you have households where you have license plates where you can represent both schools. Absolutely. And that's the fun in it, right? That's that's why we do it. That's what we're it's all in the spirit of the game. Uh, and it's in the spirit of the competitiveness and the bragging rights and all those things that come with it. Uh, and, and that's what makes college football fun, right? That's what makes the, these games fun. That's what makes it uh, an enriching experience for all of them, for everyone. Uh, and, and it ranges, you know, like you said, households to banks, to businesses, to universities, to alum, to everyone. So, uh, it's something that kind of brings uh, a force of, uh, of our culture together uh, in a very competitive, fun way um, that, you know, gives away bragging rights for the year. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's important because for us, it's another game on the schedule. Uh, and it's, you know, our goal is set out to go out and win every game and win every, every, every opportunity we get to go play and compete. Uh, we want to win. So for us, it's still about the game and going out and doing what we need to do, playing to our standards to win the football game. And we'll let the, the alums and households and everybody have fun in the spirit of the game. But we, we got to go out and win the game. Thank you, sir. Have a great week. Okay, you, do, you too, James. Thank you. We have no more questions for Coach Scott. Thanks for joining us this morning, Coach Scott. Best of luck to you and the team this week. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a great week. You as well. Howard will face Hampton on Saturday, September 16th at Audi Stadium in Washington, D.C. That game kicks off at 3.30 p.m. and is live on ESPN+. Plus. The game will all also broadcast tape delayed at 11 p.m. on ESPNU. Our next interview is with North Carolina Central head coach Trey Oliver. Good morning, Coach Oliver. Good morning, Patricia. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Coach. And yourself? I'm well. Well, Coach, last week the Eagles held North Carolina A&T scoreless in the second half en route to a 30-16 to win. Talk about what you saw from your team in that victory. Well, I was um, I was very pleased with our guys. You know, we talk about controlling what you can control. And um, it got chippy during the game, and I thought our guys, you know, kept their composure, maintained their composure. And, um, you know, an, a, a robbery like that, you know, a lot of distractions. I thought that the guys stayed locked in and stayed focused. And then lastly, our effort. Um, I challenged the guys at halftime as far as, you know, let's 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 play a little bit harder in the second half. And and I thought we played harder and, and uh played with a with a level of intensity uh that I didn't think they could match for 60 minutes. So uh the guys played and played hard for 60 minutes, and I was really really pleased with their effort. Digging a little bit more into that rivalry. This was the first time that your program has beat North Carolina a t on the road since 2015. Because of the rivalry, is there a greater satisfaction um, in this victory, or is it just the same a win as a win mentality? Nah, this is different. This win is different, especially <laughs> when you go to their place and knock them off. And, uh, you know, I told you all last week, it didn't matter where we played those guys. Our guys were locked in and ready, and we just wanted to put, put the ball down. We could have played on the moon. But um, – you know, it, it was it was a big win for the program and for our university. And and um the guys really wanted it. They, you know, it meant a lot to them. And you know, we had a couple of lopsided losses in 19, my first year here. You know, they got after us pretty good. So uh, you know, we 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 had to return that favor. <laughs> well, strong run game last week, but defense proved to be key. Can you talk about any impact impact players that you saw met up to the challenge in the game? Well, I, I thought it was a team effort with, uh, defensively. You know, and it started up front with our D-line. Um, you know, they only had 32 yards rushing in the second half and I think 70 yards total total offense. So uh, it started up front with our defensive line with Kendrick DeJour and uh, Jaden Taylor. 
And then um, I thought our linebackers played well, too. Uh, Jalen Flaker played outstanding. And then the back end, um, you know, uh, locked him down pretty good back there. So it, it was a team effort defensively. And I thought the guys uh, did a good job of swarming to the ball and, and getting hats to the ball. The first half, you know, tackling was, was still a thorn on our side. You know, we gave a 99-yard drive, which is unacceptable. Um, but we started getting more hats to the ball because we knew they had two really, really good running backs. So um, guys guys had to step it up a notch in that second half. Well, looking forward, you have a big matchup this week as you travel to California to take on UCLA. What are you hoping to see from this Eagles team when you take the field again? Well, you, it's, it's, as you're right, it's a big game. And watching film all night last, last night, these guys are big and physical and fast and well-coached and everything else. They got two first-round draft picks at both defensive ends, um, and they're really, really good. They're really good. They're top 25 teams. So um, we have to do what we talked about um, all year. You know, we have to, to we have to start fast and give our chance ourselves a chance in the first quarter. We can't get uh, down bad in the first quarter. We have to win the middle eight minutes, the last four of the first half and the first four of the second half. And then lastly, get, you know, get the game to the fourth quarter to give yourself a chance. And we talked about the same things that that Winston, uh, when they played up against us, things that they needed to do be, to be successful. So it's kind of the tale of two sides with us playing Winston two weeks ago and us going to play UCLA. You you can't get down bad early in the game, and to give you you gotta get the game to the fourth quarter. Well, thank you, Coach Oliver. That concludes all of my questions this morning. But if I can now ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media, as a reminder, please use the raised hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. Our first question for Coach Oliver this morning comes from James Hill. Hey, Coach, I hope you and everybody on campus are well. Congratulations on that victory. Talk a little bit about uh, Pee Wee, uh, Mr. Richard, his performance. And then also you look at uh, Mr. Collier, uh, the running back, um, and, and you guys were able to get it done. But talk a little bit about your offense. Well, I, again, it always starts up front for me. And I thought Daquan Thomas and played outstanding. And uh, our old line kept them upright. You know, they got a little bit of pressure on us, but uh, they kept them upright and gave them some time to throw the ball. But um, he did a great job of managing the game. Um, a and threw some stuff at us, and, and they run a lot of different fronts. And, and, you know, they do a really good job defensively, I think. And um, he did a great job of managing the game, getting us out of some bad plays and getting us in some good plays. Uh, we, You know, again, he did miss a couple, had a couple bad throws. And... Um, you know, into the, the second half, we should have put one in the box and scored a touchdown. So we had one one air throw, and then we had a drop. So, uh, but again, you know, I, my expectations of, of of Davies are extremely high out the roof. So, if, you know, if he throws one bad one, I'm I'm ba I'm, I'm upset. But uh, you know, then you talk about Mookie Collier and, and our run game. Uh, you know, Mookie's that blue collar guy, uh, Latrell that is, and and you know he runs very hard. He's very physical running back, and uh, he's great out of the backfield. So, you know, he had a couple of receptions and uh, made some big plays there. So um, uh, I, I was overall pleased with how we managed the ball, uh, managed the offense and, and um, third downs and red zone. I was very pleased with that as well. Hey coach, traveling out to the West side, you know, a lot of times when I go back home, you know, the jet lag is a factor. Uh, I don't have to play a football game, but when you guys travel, um, different time zone. Uh, the good thing is they get a chance to see HBCU football. You play in the Rose Bowl. Just talk a little bit about going out there, playing your game, and, and people will get a chance to see Mookie and, and your guys, uh, Richard, and, and all of the, your Eagles. Right. It's, it's a great opportunity for our guys and us to take our brand across the country and go over to the West Coast. Um, we have a great alumni base over there, and, and they're very supportive and you know, a lot of folks are talking about traveling out there to the game. James, you and I are old, man. I think jet lag only affects us. Our guys, my guys are young. That doesn't, they don't care about us. They don't even think about it. So, um, but no, seriously, I don't think the jet lag is really going to affect us until we travel back. Um, usually that kind of, that's when it kind of hits you. But um, the guys are excited. We're going out Thursday, so they'll be well rested uh, Thursday, Friday, and be, be prepared for the game on, on, on Saturday. But we're looking forward to it. We're getting, we're going to get with the uh, Ernie Barnes estate and uh, go see some things with, with those people. And, you know, him being an alum uh, and, and world renowned artist as, as well as an NFL draft pick. So uh, we're going to spend some time with some, some cultural things out there and uh, let the guys see some stuff. 
Thank you. Have a blessed trip. Thank you. Dr. Cavill. Cavill, inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach Oliver. Good morning, Doc. Where's your maroon tie, man? Are you still haven't sent me my stuff? And I, I figured maybe we just wait until we act play. So I was like, all right, it's not their fault. All right, I'm going to let you live. <laughs> uh, I know I was in, uh, excited and anticipated this uh, past matchup. We'll get into the next one next, and I know how you move on. But really, I focused on your defense. You talked about how they – or focused, came to play, and really stepped up the second half, shutting them out. Uh, but total, they had gave up 207 yards, uh, just 51 passing, which is extremely efficient in terms of a football game. Talk about some of the superlative play, uh, particularly in the trenches where things get done. Yeah, we um, – I didn't. I thought we played with, with – our pad level was too high. Our D linemen were standing up, uh, peaking and trying to do a little too much, you know, uh, they, they did a much better job in the second mm -hmm. half with their technique and fundamentals as far as pad level and using their hands. And uh, A&T's offensive line is big and very physical. They have a great offensive line. Their O-line coach over there does, does a heck of a job with those guys. Uh, so we had to keep our pads down. That was the biggest thing. And uh, just stay sound with that gap, gap control. Uh, but but it, was a, it was a team effort. I think our guys flew around. And uh, we, we had a couple guys that were down this week. And we lost a couple during the game. So it was really good to see the backups come in and, and it, it wasn't any drop off. So that's why the first two weeks of the year, we tried to get a lot of these guys experience. Um, but it was good to, to, to see this, some of these back, some of these younger guys come in and step up. Uh, as we said earlier, off to the West Coast, UCLA, the Bruins, um, top 25 FBS program, uh, top 25 FCS program in terms of this matchup. I know you don't get into all this uh, different levels that you're playing at, but talk about what your football team uh, has to do. And I'm looking still on the defensive side in terms of that bad level. How important uh, does that come into play? And does it really make a difference when you're talking about the size that they'll be coming to the table with? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I talk about A&T's line being bigger <laughs> physical. These guys out here, man, they, um, they are very big and very physical. Uh, they, they, they're big and they, they move people off the ball. Uh, not overly concerned. You know, they're, they're very good, they, but it's about us. And if we, we need to do things to give ourselves an opportunity to win this game, as far as, like we're saying, the just basic things, pad level, you can't stand straight up in the air. These guys are going to knock you off the ball. Um, that, and you know, we have to weather the storm with the tempo. They're a very, very fast paced team. Uh, coach Kelly, you know, he's, he's a mastermind when it comes to offense. So, uh, we have to limit the explosive plays and just can't give them cheap stuff. You know, we got to make them work for it. And and just, you know, same thing with every week. We can't let people just uh, have explosive plays on us like that. So we just need to limit those. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Appreciate it. I'm waiting on my package. <laughs> Our next question is from Ty Miller. Hey, Coach. Good morning to you. Ty Miller from the Power News Radio Network. How are you doing this morning? I'm well, Ty. How are you? I'm good, Coach. Uh, you mentioned US, UCLA. And I want to talk some specifics uh, about some of the players. I want to start with on, on defense with Leitu Latu. He's a big defensive end, like 6'5". He's going to have to be double or triple team. Give us some thoughts on him. We're going to probably play with four offensive tackles. We're going to put two offensive tackles on the left and two offensive <laughs> tackles on the right and try to slow these guys down. You talk about him. What about the guy on the other side? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm saying he gets most of the press, of course. But uh, you, you said they got two defensive ends, but that's the one who gets most of the press. Yeah, they no, I, they they're very good. They're very talented, and um, you know, you know what you're gonna get when you play these type got these type teams. So, uh, and that's you know that's what it's about. You know, our guys got to grow up and grow up fast. You know, nobody's gonna feel sorry for you or anything like that. That's why we put this game on the schedule for us to get tested, and we'll get tested. You know, we've had I think 28 teams from the NFL come in here evaluating our guys, and they don't want to see our guys against. Division two or Division three opponents. They want to see our guys against draft picks from these D one schools and see how we hold up. Uh, so it'll be it'll definitely be a test for us. And and um, you know we we've got to do a great job and come up with a great game plan to try to slow these guys down. But uh, they are game changers. They are game changers. I didn't get any sleep last night. 
So, so for our scout teams, uh, when you look at people like the quarterback Dante Clark and J. Michael Sturdivant, that big wide receiver, how do you simulate that in practice? Uh, you really can't. I mean, uh, we we have our scout team quarterbacks that are very good and, and elusive and have a similar skill set. Um, but when you're talking about four and five star players, you not we're not gonna have four and five star players on our scout team. So I don't really know how how you simulate that. Um, you know, we'll we'll run some of the plays that we've seen on film, um, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about angles that we need to take and how we're gonna leverage the ball, how we're gonna stay out of one on one situations. You know, knowing where your help is. Um, but you know, it's, it's you got to be disciplined with your eyes first and foremost. We got to get lined up to the tempo, and um, we we you know we we have to like I said, stay out of one on one situations and try to uh, leverage do a great job of leveraging the ball. Uh, finally, Coach, uh, you mentioned Ernie Barnes, and we all people of our age or in our age bracket know of Ernie Barnes. How did it come about with this whole trip to educate them about his estate and his background, and everything that he's done? But he uh, obviously he was from Durham, went to North Carolina Central, and and had a uh, uh, lived in LA for a long time, playing for the uh, after he got drafted to the NFL. So it's going to be an opportunity when we go out there, um, uh, SoCon, Dre, the stadium that we're going to be going to, mm -hmm. SoFi, excuse me, SoFi Stadium. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to go out there and and uh, spend some time. But um, when his estate came here, we we had uh, uh, dinner together and. Uh, they had his exhibit up in the Raleigh Museum, Art Museum. So um, his family stayed in touch with the university and athletic department. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for our guys just to be around and understand it's bigger than just football. Um, you know, we've had people from North Carolina Central do big things, not just on the field, but uh, professionally as well. Thank you, Coach. That's a good story, and we like to hear that. So we'll be using that one. Thanks. Thank you. Charles Bishop. Good morning, Coach Oliver. Good morning, Charles. Uh, Charles Bishop, uh, Dr. Gills inside the HBCU Sports Lab. And I wanted to follow up on uh, what you were talking about in regards to uh, the preparation for uh, UCLA, especially the quarterback, uh, Dante Moore, five-star guy. Uh, but a true freshman, uh, is, does the preparation change, especially uh, when you take a look at the fact that he's uh, just a year removed from high school? No, he's five-star. <laughs> <laughs> no, the preparation is not... We, we don't really change how we prepare for whether it's a Winston, a North Carolina a &C, or a UCLA um, as far as how we prepare. Now, the game plan might change somewhat as far as, uh, you know, we probably need to have two people on the quarterback. You know, some guys aren't uh, scramblers and just, you know, just pocket passers, so we're not really worried about them scrambling. But when you have a guy that, you know, they want to run zone read and run their quarterback, we want to stay out of one-on-one -on -one situations. So we have to figure out a way how to get at least one and a half people or two people you know, on the quarterback, but he's very elusive, very athletic, uh, and has a, a, a has a great arm, and you know, hence five star athlete. Sure, sure. Quick follow up, uh, another victory, not only uh, over a rival but over a CAA opponent. Uh, what does it do for the conference as a whole with regards to recruiting, especially uh, with MIAC and CAA in the same geographic footprint? Yep. Well, you know, we uh, we as a, a MIAC, and I'm sure all the coaches on this call. We want to hold it down for our conference. So whenever we get an opportunity to play somebody non-conference, you know, it's, it, it means a lot for us, whether it's a SWAC opponent, a CAA, or Big South, whomever it is. And, um, you know, how it affects recruiting, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think with, with, with what you saw Saturday night in that stadium, they're not going to have crowds like that except for homecoming. You know, so mm -hmm. if you want to come play in a type of environment like that, if you want to come play in classics, the Circle City, the Magic City, whatever the case may be, the SWAC and the MEHEC are where you need to be. They're not going to be doing all that in the CAA. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's funny. The referees came to me and talked about they don't mind the bands playing why the ball's in play. That's the CAA. That's never been an issue. I said, man, they play piccolos and flutes in, in that conference. They don't have 100 tubas like like our bands are going to have. So, uh, sure. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a different dynamic. It's a different footprint. Um, you know, CAA is a great conference. And they have a lot of top 25 teams. But whenever we have an opportunity to play out of conference, uh, I definitely love doing that because obviously when you beat those teams, it helps you with your national ranking. Sure thing. Appreciate you, Coach. Good luck. As a matter of you. shout out to Morgan State and what Dave Coach Wilson has done. Unfortunately, they didn't pull that thing off last week. But for them to beat Richmond, 
obviously let y'all let people know the type of football that we play here in our conference. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. There are no more questions for Coach Oliver this morning. As always, thank you for joining us, Coach Oliver. Best of luck to you and your team this week and safe travels. Thank you. North Carolina Central will travel to Pasadena, California to take on UCLA. That game kicks off Saturday, September 16th at 5 p.m. and will broadcast on Pac-12 Network. Our next interview is with Delaware State head coach Lee Hull. Good morning, Coach Hull. Good morning. How are we doing this morning, Coach? Good, good. Doing well. Great. Well, Coach, huge challenge last week as you faced the faced Army. What did you see from this game? Um, I mean, there, there was a lot to take from it. There's a lot of positives, uh, you know, from from the game. Um, offensively, we we moved the ball. You know, we did some good things. Obviously, we didn't score. Um, so that's the 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 one thing that negative of it is once we got down to the red zone to in, in about the 30 yard line, we kind of self destructed. But um, you know, time of possession, um, you know, we we had bigger time of possession. So there there's a because we didn't we didn't move the ball. We were down there um about four times and you know we missed two field goals. So we gotta we gotta clean that up, you know, de defensively. Um, you know, I, I thought they played well early and then it just just kind of got away from them a little bit. You know, obviously during the during the option game and and you know, all the things that come with that, you only have a week to prepare for them. So they and they threw the ball and did some things differently than they had in the past. They really hadn't thrown the ball as much, but um I know our defense will will bounce back this week. Well, let's, let's put the the record to the side for a second, Coach. From a coaching perspective, when rebuilding a program, as with your your task here at Delaware State, what do you find to be the most challenging assignments? Um, just just getting the guys to believe in themselves. You know, that's that's the biggest thing we talk to them about is you know they they, they got to believe we we have enough talent to to to. In, in these kinds of situations, in these types of games, so to learn from it, it's it's a different offense, defense, special team. So it's still uh, a learning curve. You know, my my biggest thing right now is for us to improve um, each week, and and we did improve. I know you know score doesn't say that, but we we did we did improve. You know, now we just got to you know put things together, but more you know getting in games, being in games, learning how to win games, believing in themselves. Well, another tough matchup lies ahead this week as you take on Richmond. How are you preparing for this matchup? I mean, we're gonna, we're preparing the same way we always prepare. You know, um, um, you know, we don't we don't prepare any any, any different. You know, we're we're, we're not going to change how we do things because you know we we haven't won yet this year. Um, you know, we we have a routine, things that we do. Um, it's proven to to, to be a winner and um, doing it this way. So we're, we're, we're just going to keep doing the things that, that we're doing and not change anything, not, you know, um, think it's the end of the world and, and, and change everything that we're doing. Well, thank you, Coach Hole. That concludes all of my questions this morning. But if I can ask you to take, stay on the line and take any questions from the media, as a reminder, please use the red hand, raise hand feature and remain muted until you are introduced. Our first question for Coach Hole this morning is from James Hill. Good morning, Coach. I hope you're well. Talk a little bit about your running back, uh, Marquise Gillis. Uh, what are you seeing with him? Yeah, Mar Mar Marquise is a, is is a, is a very good running back. You know, he he runs hard uh, to throw the ball a little bit more to get in the game. But we'd love to to be able to uh, establish a running game. You know, with him, um, we just can't start off slow and and get behind. Um, because you know he 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 is a good running back and you know one of the better running backs in in this league, um, and then you know also you know also um, Wade Inge has been doing a great job for us too. So you know we have we do have some running backs, so we just have to like I said just um, not get behind and be able to utilize those guys. Coach, you'll get an opportunity to see Richmond, the Spiders, and Morgan had some success in that contest. Richmond coming off a loss to Michigan State. But just talk a little bit about the, the opportunity to play the Spiders and, and go out and get one. Yeah, it's it's, it's a great great uh you know great opportunity for us. Anytime you can go you know out of conference and play a CA CA school, um, you know you you know they're you know they're going to be well coached. 
um, very very disciplined. They they fly around. Um, so this would be a good good matchup for us. You know, both both teams. You know, zero and two. You know, have uh, you know played played a FBS school and and you know last last week. So it's kind of the same same type. I think both have great defense. Both offenses are trying to find their identity. Um, so it, it should be a, a pretty good matchup. And it's just I think it's going to come down to um, which offense can can get it going. Thank you, sir. Have a great week. Yeah, thanks. Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill. Dr. Cavill is inside the HBC Sports Lab. Coach Hall, how are you doing this morning? Good, good. How you doing, doctor? I'm doing well. I want to talk a little bit about Marquis Adams, freshman, 6'1", 175 pounds uh, from Philadelphia. Obviously, you have the natural components of a freshman starting it and moving from high school to college. Just talk about um, one reason that you went with him at such a young age and how he's going thus far. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a learning curve, you know, for for a young guy uh, coming right in and high, uh, right out of high school. But I mean, actually, he's a redshirt freshman, so he was here last year, but um, didn't didn't play. So he's you know he's a little bit inexperienced. Um, you know he you know he's he's a good athlete, has a strong arm. He's got to learn how to con control his arm. Um, a little bit, uh, but he, you know, I think he can be very good in this in this league. He's one of those um, typical MEAC quarterbacks, you know, uh, that can throw and, and also can can run. You know, he's obviously he's got to uh, protect the football, but he's going he's going through his his learning curves right now. It's 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 a different. Um, so I, I look for him to to get better and better each each game. The more he plays. Want to get into the next matchup with Richmond uh, from a different pers perspective? Uh, what are some key things that you see they do offensively that you want to impede? Yeah, um, I mean they're 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 good on defense. They 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 run around, um, and they and they 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 play hard. They're physical up front, um, and and, and they're they're D line. So I mean we're gonna to have to try to really match match that intensity really. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Uh, thank you. There are no more questions for Coach Hull this morning. Thanks again for joining us this morning, Coach Hull. Best of luck to you and the team this week. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. You as well. Delaware State will travel to Richmond, Virginia to take on the University of Richmond. The game kicks off Saturday, September 16th at the E. Claiborne Robbins Stadium. The game will broadcast at 3.30 p.m. on Flow Football. Our next interview is with Norfolk State head coach Dawson Odoms. Good morning, Coach Odoms. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing well, Coach. And yourself? Uh, doing good. Coach, last week, nice and convincing victory against the Pirates of Hampton University. Talk about how you saw last week's matchup. Well, you know, I thought we played inspired football. We had a tough loss in week one, and, you know, everybody began to come in and talk about it and you always got to go back to work. I mean, football is a long season and that's what you have to understand. Uh, you won't be defined by wins and losses. You just got to regroup and refocus and find a way to try to get a W. And I thought our guys did an outstanding job of that. These coaches and these players were in, the, we were in a bad space and that's when you become a really great leader is just understanding how to lead young men through adversity and they responded. They responded with an unbelievable effort. They played inspired football. And uh, they just tell you a lot about this football team. Uh, we're climbing. And like I told them, just keep climbing. We understand where we are. And we understand how we need to play to be successful. But they're climbing. And you can see us each each week. We're going to get a little bit better, a little bit better. And uh, we're going to be playing our best football when it comes conference time. Well, Coach, oddly enough, last week we spoke about those big adjustments that happened between week one and week two. What did you see after that first week and what adjustments were made going into this matchup um, that helped earn the victory? Well, the biggest thing is just executing. I thought our guys were uh, very, very polished in the execution of the game plan. I thought they did an outstanding job of doing what they were asked and thought practice was a little bit more intense and 
uh, really just thought their level of concentration and focus was where it needed to be in order to be successful. And uh, that was tough. Uh, the way they responded is I take my hat off to them because uh, that don't happen. Uh, you know, I, I text Dabo Sweeney after their loss to Duke and told him be one. I know it's a tough loss, uh, but it'd be one of the toughest things you do. Uh, but in adversity, just remember, love more. And that's really all we did was just love on them. They were hurt and they were getting beat up daily. But at the end of the day, we control the narrative of what people write. We're the, we're the authors of our story. So if we wanted to change it, we had to go out and find a way to win so that they could talk about something else other than our loss. Well, Coach, similar to your league members, this week you have a pretty big non-conference matchup as you take on Temple. What are you expecting from this matchup? Well, they're a good football team. Anytime you're moving up in levels and playing, uh, give a chance for you to showcase your program, give you a chance to play against a team that has a little bit more, has a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, we go get 60 minutes. That's all we talk about. You're guaranteed 60 minutes. And at the end of those 60 minutes, if you need more, they'll give you more. But usually that story is going to be wrote. Uh, how do, what do we want them to write about us is our message every week. Uh, we got to trust the process, the plan that we have in place. We got to play extremely hard. We got to play physical. We got to play fast. And we got to execute. At the end of the day, you give yourself a chance when you don't beat yourself. And that's the biggest thing when it comes to football is you watch it. You watch it. A lot of teams don't beat you. You usually beat yourself. And when you go back and look at the film, you're always trying to figure out what you could have done better to prevent that from happening. And each week, that's what we're focusing on, just not beating ourselves. Make it hard for the opponent, compete for 60 minutes and beyond, and give yourself a chance to win a football game. Thank you, Coach Odoms. That concludes my questions this morning. But if I can ask you to stick around for any additional questions from the media, as a reminder, please use the raise hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. Our first question for Coach Odoms this morning comes from Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach O. Good morning, Dr. Cavill. As you said, big bounce back victory, uh, kind of circle the wagons and, and guys got it done. We'll talk a little bit about Coons 15 to 20, 199 yards, three touchdowns. It had the interception, but just kept plugging away and getting things done and leading that offense. Well, he, he did a much better job of delivering the football on time. And we still left some plays out there that we did not make. But uh, I thought he played better. And, you know, when you play as bad as we did the first game, you want to blow everything up and, you know, point fingers and, and do all those things. But that's not how life works. Uh, life is about realizing what you didn't do well and coming back and embracing your opportunity and saying, you know what, I'm going to play better the next time. Uh, we go coach better. Our players go play better. And that's what they did. And all you can do is applaud them for that. But I'm happy for him because, you know, he took a, he took a lot on that first loss. And for him to respond and, and lead the offense tells you a lot about his growth process. Uh, you can, you're only can be, you can only be a good quarterback after adversity. When it's going good, that, that don't define you as a quarterback. But when you overcome adversity and you respond – uh, it tells us a lot about the individual and the growth of the individual. And and he got a chance. He got a chance to continue to get better and be special before the season is over. Yeah, speaking about adversity, uh, significant way the team bounced back. With that said, focus and move to Temple. Obviously, you're talking about the FBS, FCS. Uh, I know no don't necessarily coaches focus on those uh, notations as they have for the NCAA. But one to look at your defense in terms of some things they may be able to seek to do against EJ Warner, sophomore quarterback for Temple, uh, and what they're trying to do offensively uh, to attack the defense from your perspective. Well, he's the field general. Uh, you got to be able to to really – we got to be better at our gap control. Uh, we got to be better at mm -hmm. understanding why help is and, and do a better job of – understanding when the ball's across the line of scrimmage versus behind the line of scrimmage uh, and then tackling. Uh, we still we still miss some tackles, but we were better in the second game than we were the the first game, and hopefully we'll be a lot better in the third game than we were in the second game. But I, I just think, you know, young guys and guys that, that go through camp, you don't get a chance to tackle as much. So usually about three games into the season, you should have a really good understanding of – what kind of football team you're going to have and 
and you should be able to see the biggest improvements. It used to be from game one to two, but the way the schedules are, uh, you're really going to see the biggest improvements probably from games three to four because you're playing so many different kind mm -hmm. of opponents to be able to get an evaluation. Uh, but you will have a good good idea of who you are after those first three games. And then you can begin to say, OK, let's move the team in this direction or this direction and do an evaluation. But uh, I really like where we are mentally. I think that's more that's bigger than anything. Uh, it's just having the right mindset. And you saw that in game two. Uh, I don't think that game, it goes in our favor if we had a different mindset, uh, just mm -hmm. the way they prepared and and the way they they really understood it. And you're starting to hear the dialogue of what we preach every day. You're starting to hear them say it. And that means we're coming. And I know we're not there yet, but you can feel it. And a lot of people can see it. Uh, they also see a lot of mistakes on film. But we're excited where we are. We feel like the mistakes that we're making, we can clean them up. Uh, but but we got a good mixture of of youth and, and older. Uh, but this football team got a chance to be to be really special, and we can stay healthy and continue to get better because we got a got a tough non conference schedule. Thank you, Coach Odom. Look forward to week three and four uh, based on that. Our next question is from James Hill. Hey, Coach, congratulations on that victory. Uh, talk a little bit about rivalry games, and in particular, when you started out in the first quarter, uh, Mr. Aaron Moore got the 41-yard pass for the touchdown from Otto and how that set the tone for the team to uh, play at a high level, so to speak. I would say when you're on the road, you want to get off to a fast start. Uh, you want to create momentum when you're in enemy territory. Uh, so that's the biggest thing. I think when you talk about the art of war, you just have to have a good understanding that cooler heads prevail. Uh, you got to be able to stay calm. You got to be able to control your emotions. Uh, you got to win the penalty battle and you got to play with great effort. And if you can do those things, you're going to give yourself a chance because it's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things that you can't control. But to see those two connect, we've been, we missed some in the first game. Uh, we finally got a connection and to see those guys get off to a fast start and just see the energy and excitement on the sideline from our wonderful fan base. It's just exciting uh, because a week ago we were so disappointed, but uh, to see the excitement and, 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 the, and the fan support, uh, it just tells you that, you know, it's a lot of people still pulling for you. And uh, we understand that winning do heals a lot of things, but I was excited for the connection of those two and hopefully they can be special this year for us. Coach Odoms, uh, the thought process going into Philadelphia, big stage, great opportunity, Temple Owls football. Um, take us through going in there. And again, it's about turning the corner and and making those improvements, as you say, in, in week three and four. You know, just tell us what your thoughts are going into Philly. Well, we're going to play against a good football team, well-coached football team. Uh, they're going to be a, a little bit bigger. Uh, they got some size, uh, got some speed. Uh, but at the end of the day, if if you can just eliminate distractions and just focus one play at a time, and and you heard some of the other coaches on here talk about it, that's playing up in division. It's just it's just take the game in increments and just chop it down into small increments. And we always talk about the first five minutes of a football game. Uh, make sure that that you're in it in the first five. Uh, usually in those games, something big usually happen right off the bat and it began to snowball from there. So if you can get through the first five and somehow survive the first quarter and, and turn to the second quarter and you start believing a little bit more and you start getting into that middle eight, once you get into that middle eight, uh, you you got to survive it because if it's a close game, they go try to come out in the second half and, and create explosive plays. If it's not a close game, then you ain't got to worry about the middle eight. So, uh, but if you can just navigate and just play good football and just be in striking distance. And now the pressure goes back on your opponent. And now give you an opportunity to play a little bit more inspired football. You never know the ball might bounce your way. And that's the thing in those kind of games. You got to create your bounces by hanging close and playing inspired football. But it will be a great challenge for the Spartans. But like I told these guys, you're built for it. Uh, we, we built this team a certain way. And we're building it a certain way. And I think people are starting to see uh, how we're building and what we're doing. We're, we're still some pieces away, but we feel like we got enough pieces to, to really have an impact on this season. 
Thank you, sir. Have a great week. Thank you. Our last question for Coach Odoms this morning comes from Brian Smith. Hey, Coach. Um, will you look at this, the win over Hampton, it, not right now, you're just two games in, but is it one of those situations where you might look back on the season and this could have been one of the turning points of your season as a program and turning things around? Well, well, you know, I always said, you know, and I think I said last week, it's always going to be a defining moment in the season. And whether it was the, the loss of game one or the win of game two or, you know, something else down the road. But usually a season is going to have a defining moment. And uh, we all look back as coaches and say, this is what turned our season around. I think it's too early to tell what that moment is but most definitely believe that it's going to be something in this season that's a defining moment. We're early in the season, and we know that it's a gauntlet to get to me at play. And everybody's going to play, you know, six non-conference games, and injuries are going to start mounting up. You know, the, the, the wrong people get, get injured, and this, this drive of what you want to achieve began to look totally different. So it's still early in the season. Uh, you got to dodge the injury bug. You got to – you got to play a uh, competitive level of football. And hopefully when you get the conference play, you're playing your best. And I always tell you, it doesn't matter. We got two seasons. We're one of the few conferences that have two seasons. We have a non-conference season where you might not be playing well. And then you get the conference play and all of a sudden the light switch come on and anybody in our conference can beat anybody. And we saw that uh, two years ago with uh, with uh, South Carolina State. They entered with, with I think, a one in five non-conference record and go five and no in the conference. So it's it, it's a challenge. And I think all the coaches in this conference understand that what we do out of conference, yeah, that's good. We want to win. You want to be. But we know that we don't get anything for a non-conference championship. It's all about the conference play. And you got to have your football team playing its best when it comes conference time. And to do that, you need your best players out there. There are no more questions for Coach Odoms this morning. Thank you for joining us this morning, Coach Odoms. Best of luck to you and your team this week and safe travels. Thank you. Behold, the green and gold. Thank you. Norfolk State will travel to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on Saturday, September 16th to take on Temple. That game will be played at the Lincoln Financial Field and will broadcast at 2 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. Our next interview is with South Carolina State Head Coach Buddy Pugh. Good morning, Coach Pugh. Good morning, Patricia. How are you? Well, Coach, and yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Well, Coach, tough matchup last week against Georgia Tech. Can you talk about the matchup from your vantage point? Yeah, uh, we played at Georgia Tech on Saturday. Had a little bit of a weather delay. Uh, this time of year, down south, you get those kind of incidents. And uh, we were supposed to play a 1 o'clock game. We ended up playing about a 3.30 game. And uh, we go out, and uh, in the first series of the game, we actually ended up throwing a uh, a pick on maybe the third play of the game, and they got down close and got in, and we struggled to stop them all day. But I can tell you that I was I, I was pleased with our effort for the entire game. We think we 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 continue to think that we we improve a little bit each week. Uh, we ended up rushing the football for almost two hundred yards against these guys, and you know that's a uh, you know a, a good step forward for us. Uh, uh, I would like to before I get to Far uh, to ask some questions. Congratulate Central uh, Norfolk and 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 uh, Howard on their wins. And I'm gonna be honest. I, on the way back home, I was listening. We had the uh, the internet on uh, uh, watching the uh, the Morgan game, and I couldn't believe, man. I was so <laughs> that, that 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 was really, Coach Wilson has, has really done a fantastic job there. And, you know, that was a tough loss. It was those guys really should have won that football game. But we always pull them for all of our conferences, mates, and uh, and uh, and Dale didn't play bad either. I don't think so. You know, we're looking forward to seeing if we can get. To, I don't know if I want to do that one and five deal again, Dawson Odoms. <laughs> the way we got there was a long road, and uh, anytime you do the kind of stuff that we did in the end, it's always fun, but. As you're going through that particular process, it's not pretty. And uh, we are working now to try to see if we get – we on three again. Uh, we do come home. We off this week. We come home next week, week after next, I guess, now, to play the Citadel. 
the Steelers kind of struggling some too. We need to win a game fast <laughs> right now. And you can talk all the different kinds of stuff about improvement and and the standard and behold the blue and gold and whatever the hell. You got but I right at right now we need to win a football game. So I'm looking forward to this week off and working to see if we can get to the to the point where we can actually put this thing together. We've got a young football team. This team we playing freshman wide receiver, freshman, all our offensive skill, you know, it's is is young and uh we need to uh give those guys some success. And then last but not least, defensively, we struggle a little bit. So we need to get this win here real soon, uh to see if we can get ourselves right in. Excuse me, Patricia. I didn't mean to go that far, but I did. No, no, not a problem, Coach. I, I, I too was watching and had a lot of excitement. I had to console yeah. the little one um, after that Morgan State game. Um, yep. he, from his point of view, he said, "Mama, you scared me." So uh, it was <laughs> that ball. Fuck that ball! I said, oh, wow. so, "You don't know how I, much pain he costs us all." You know. Yeah, it was. It was. It was pretty difficult yeah. um, to to settle down that night. Yeah. So I completely understand what you were. To yeah. facing, and you pretty much hit all of my questions. The only thing that I'd like to ask is that yes, you did mention you have an open week. So, what is the focus of the bye week? Uh, it, it, get, trying to get better. You, it, it, when you hadn't won a game, you're back to the fundamentals and all that kind of stuff. We'll self study and try to figure out as coaches, you know, what we're doing and what's been good, what's been not good, you know, that kind of stuff. But it's mostly right now trying to figure out how to, you know, how to see if we can get ourselves right and win a game too. Well, thanks, Coach Pew. Um, all right, Patricia. That's all of my questions, but if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. As a reminder, please use the raise hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. Our first question for Coach Pew this morning comes from James Hill. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing, sir? Hey, James. How are you this morning? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Talk a little bit about Mr. Corey Fields. Uh, he was able to come back 9-15, right. 91 yards, one pick. But tell us about his foot and, and how he's doing so far. Yeah, Corey, we we pretty much resigned ourselves to the fact that we'll we'll play both those guys uh some James. And uh, you know, we'll try to figure out exactly how we sort that out. But at this point, Corey is back and he's not quite full speed. But I think that, you know, it looks like we are going to try to do, you know, the entire offense through him pretty similar to what we do with Andre Washington, who's also playing for us. So Corey played, I guess, maybe half that game on Saturday. We played Andre the other half. We actually played Prometheus Franklin, the young man that got hurt against Howard in our second to last game of the season, had ACL surgery a little bit toward the end. So we played three of those guys. And you know what? You know, we kind of like the idea of keeping them kind of rotating a little bit. I feel kind of like uh, – like Brian Jenkins, uh, Alvin Wyatt, or some of those guys from Platoon Quebec, know that they always play more than one quarterback. So we're going to try to figure this thing out. We're not quite sure where we're headed, but we'll sort through it during the holidays. I mean, during the, uh, during the uh, off week here and uh, try to figure it out. Coach, uh, the Citadel, uh, that's a golden opportunity to get one. But just talk a little bit about going in into that particular game and, and Mr. Godbolt and uh, Mr. Green, Jablonski, and, and, and health, and, and just going in and playing uh, S South Carolina State football? Well, uh, we need to play South Carolina State defense. We hadn't stopped anybody. That's been a major concern. And our defensive guys have worked their fans off trying to get our defense going. And uh, uh, Godbold and, and, and Jablonski and that whole defensive front group has struggled some. But, you know, it's been a lot to do with who we're playing, too. Both Georgia Tech's and Charlotte's offensive fronts were were very very good, and uh, you know our guys have gotten uh, kind of pushed around a little bit up front. So we're looking to try to see if we can get those guys up and running versus our level talent, and uh, you know hopefully it'll be you know a little different story once we get against these teams that we plan here, you know, upcoming on our schedule. Thank you, Coach. Have a nice week. All right, James. Appreciate you. The Yard HBCU Sports is up next. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Fine. How are you? Yeah, this is Dwayne Nash with the Yard HBCU Sports and with Hero Sports. Um, I was actually going to save this question for you until the end of the month, 
But since you kind of touched on it right now, I thought I'd go ahead and take this opportunity to talk to you about it now. Um, you've been having, well, South Carolina State's been having slow starts in the month of August and September dating back to uh, 2016. I don't want to necessarily bring up the win percentage right now, but mm -hmm. for, you guys seem to always turn it around in October and November. I know that's not necessarily what you guys are seeking to do, but my question is, what are the conversations like with your team during these rough times to get them to potentially have a better start once conference play comes yeah. around? We've been through, we've been here before. Uh, tough times don't last, tough people do. Uh, you talk all the different kinds of things about, you know, the circumstances of who we play in and where we playing them at, you know, that kind of stuff. So you pretty much understand after having gone, the die was cast to a certain degree unless we had a real big upset after we lost the Jackson game. We really threw all our eggs into making sure that we won the Jackson game. And after we got beaten up in that game, you know, that was a big eye opener. That was a, you know, what the heck have we got here moment. So, you know, we had to go from there to Charlotte, from there, from Charlotte to, to Atlanta, back to Atlanta to play Georgia Tech. Uh, you got to be you, you got to be realistic about your your, your chances those ways. So we just kind of just be honest with our guys. Say, hey, you know, if we win, we win. But if we don't, you know, don't act like you're surprised by it all. And then let's see if we can figure out how to get better as we go. So the key the key for us is to continue to improve to get a little bit better because we were bad early. We still ain't all that good, but at the same time, we're better than we were. So. You know, at this point, we on not see we're going to be good enough to play some of the teams at our level in the, in the upcoming games, and hopefully, you know, we are. All right, thanks so much, Coach. You guys rest up this week. You got a big win in the Palmetto State uh, down in Charleston with uh, Citadel. Well, it's actually here in Orangeburg, thank goodness. I oh, it's going to be it's time for us okay. to be – hey, let's play at home, please. Thank you. One time, yes. <laughs> Our last question for Coach View this morning comes from Ty Miller. Hey, Coach, how you been, man? Morning, Ty. How are you? I'm good. Now, this is your last rodeo. So how does bye week change for you being that this is your last season? You know what? I don't know if it does, Ty. You know, we do our deal. You know, if I want to talk maybe Norfolk State or some of those other guys speech, you know, the standard is the standard, you know, the blue and <laughs> whatever is the blue and whatever. So it's you know, it's one of those deals where we stick, we stick to our plan. We won't change very much. We always self-scout. We always work back to figure out, you know, what's been good, what's been bad. We try to fix as many ills as we can. You know, it's all about trying to get better. And uh, we feel like we've got a chance. We are we young as all get out now. And, you know, the fact that we've got to go back and do some fundamental stuff and kind of get ourselves back into – you know, uh, a, a, a preseason camp routine for a couple of days might be, you know, kind of appropriate. But besides that, you know, it'll be business as usual for what we generally do during the open week. And hey, Coach Otis mentioned that it's like two seasons now when you play a non-conference schedule mm -hmm. early on for about five or six weeks, then you get into the conference schedule. So do you feel that's the same way, you look at it the same way now, that it's almost two seasons? Oh, for sure. And the fact that you got the entire conference schedule, we don't have it mixed in you know, with the uh, non-conference schedule really makes it obvious that way in the fact that you go you, you go through your non-conference schedule and you just completely separate and go back to, to your conference schedule. So it's two different schedules for sure. And from that point on, you know, you bang, bam, boom, you're right through the conference. So hopefully we'll be playing good by that time. You know, that's the key. I'm sounds like the, the message that I'm hearing from everybody is, is it's not necessarily what you do here. And, and we all in. Our league is it's all in on the celebration bowl. So we all fighting our fans are trying to figure out how to get there. And, uh, you know, if we should happen to have a strong enough non-conference schedule, we strong enough to have a, a, uh, uh, a, a good overall schedule because you can get some strength and schedule out of these schedules that we play. We all playing, you know, the, the level of competition that will give an opportunity to get to move up in the rankings. And we can get a team and that large team into the playoffs, but mostly, we all worry about trying to figure out how to get the celebration ball. <laughs> also, Coach, uh, being that this is your last season, how has it affected recruiting, and, and and how are you talking to recruits now about being a South Carolina State Bulldog? Well, you know, I'm, we're talking about being a, being just that, a South Carolina State Bulldog, and, 
you know, the tradition is is you know is a solid one, and they'll continue to be, you know, the same people that we are, you know, from all the years in the past. So uh, it'll be so hard to be a bulldog and all that kind of stuff that you talk about when you start talking about being a part of this program. So you we'll be fine, you know, the kids of the state that are gonna come. We got a tradition of a certain group of people wanting to come to South Carolina State, and uh, I think that you know that'll continue. Hey, Coach, I just want to say this, too. I mean, I've always appreciated We've known this show over 30 years. I always appreciate you give us more than just a sound bite and just coach speak. You give us good content for, for our show. So just appreciate uh, you for doing that. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you guys, uh, Ty, and look forward to, to hanging out with y'all and doing whatever we do when we're friends at some point here in the future. Okay. There are no more questions for Coach Pugh. As always, thank you for joining us this morning, Coach Pew. Best of thank luck to you. you. And enjoy Y'all have a good morning. Thank Thanks. you. South Carolina State is open this week, but we'll take on the Citadel in their next matchup. That game kicks off Saturday, September 23rd at the Oliver C. Dawson Stadium in Orangeburg, South Carolina. The game will broadcast at 6 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. A little note here, due to a, a, a private and personal matter, unfortunately, Coach Wilson will be unable to join us this morning. Nevertheless, we will be joined this morning by um, Offensive Coordinator B.T. Sherman. Good morning, Coach Sherman. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm all right. I've been better, though. <laughs> yeah, we, we all have. We all we were all there with you, Coach. Um very close to pulling off that FBS victory and in a moment of excitement when the victory was so close and in our hands, in our hands, the ties quickly shifted to a heartbreaking loss. Can you take us through that matchup against Akron? Uh, well, it, was, it started off slow, uh, started off slow. And then we ended up, uh, defense played great and gave the offense some opportunities to kind of make some plays and, and score some points. Made a key mistake before the half. Uh, they kind of flipped things around, but we were able to come back, score a couple of touchdowns and take the lead. And then, uh, you know, hey, an unfortunate situation happened. Uh, something that you, you you can't plan for. You practice all the time. Uh, worst possible case scenario happened. And, and uh, that's where we are now. We just can't let that uh, beat us two weeks in a row. Mm. As you're alluding to, Coach, this was a difficult loss to shoulder. And the yeah. challenge is to remain close during these difficult times. How do you recover from this difficult loss? Uh, you just got to go back to see what you, uh, one, could have done better to not be in that position, which there were a lot of things that we could have done to, to where that, that particular play couldn't have even hurt us and everything. So that's the first thing. And then like each coach has said on there, just continue to work and get better uh, each and every day. Mm -hmm. This week, you have an interstate rival as you host Townsend. Talk about this pending matchup. Uh, Battle of Baltimore. You know, they're five, ten minutes down the street, so it's been a rivalry here. Uh, should be a packed house and everything. So uh, just trying to get in the win column. Trying to get in the win column. Uh, again, the defense has been playing great offensively. We're going to try to find a way to stay consistent and everything. And once we get that done, I think we'll be fine. Well, thanks, Coach Sherman. Thank you for joining this morning. That concludes all of my questions. We will now take questions from the media. As a reminder, please use the raised hand feature and remain muted until you're introduced. Our first question for Coach Sherman this morning comes from James Hill. Hey, Coach. I hope you and everybody at Morgan are well. Uh, just talk a little bit about the building of a program and the progression, those steps uh to win more games and you guys are trending in the right direction uh coach wilson you know one starting off last year we didn't know what we had and we were trying to build on the fly uh now being here uh, over a year now we kind of know what we had what we needed uh, but it's still a process still a process still trying to uh, one we've added new guys and uh that we think can help us but they still have to learn uh, quote unquote, our culture and what we're trying to do and have confidence in themselves. And unfortunately, that, that uh, because you don't scrimmage, that has to happen uh, during the season. So part of that non-conference schedule uh, does help you in a way. Coach Sherman, every week uh, there's a matchup. And when you guys play against uh, foes, if you will, um, they're looking saying, wow, okay, uh, Morgan's tough. But just talk a little bit about building that 
and continuing to 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 get better and grind it out. And you get an opportunity uh, in your in your battle of Baltimore, if you will, this weekend. I tell you that the easiest way to do it is just uh, have a plan and uh, have your players be tough each play. And and if you could do that, it, you know, it's a bunch of plays, you end up being a tough team and everything. So uh, we really just try to focus on all of the little small things uh, and the details of playing football and playing the right way. And, you know, you do that for the course of 60 minutes, you give yourself the best chance. And everything. So that that's really what we're trying to do right now. Thank you, sir. Uh, continued success. All right, thank you. Our next question comes from Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach Chairman. Good morning. How you doing, Doc? I'm doing well. I wanted to ask you about the emotional roller coaster. You kind of alluded to it. Uh, but from a coaching perspective, how do you dig back into the, either life experiences or coaching experiences uh, for you to um, wrap your hands around the team and the kid? that this happened to? Uh, well, well, first things first, as, uh, as a coach, you know, I, I have to take responsibility for uh, what happened, you know? So uh, once I told those guys, they, they know I take responsibility. And then after that, uh, now I've got to take the responsibility and, and have the opportunity of correcting it and all that. So uh, we got our 24 hour rule, you know, hey, you, you celebrate wins, all right, losses, you get rid of, of them and flush them. So uh, 24 hours is over with now. So now we're looking forward and preparing for Towson. And, and things are going to happen in life that you just got to push through. But it's definitely a tough time. I, I appreciate that perspective and you sharing it. And it's, it's good to hear that this coming from the coaching staff. Uh, with that being said, matchup with Towson, obviously, rivalry in terms of the area. Uh, Great matchup last year right there. Is it good that you have this as the next kind of game to, to refocus uh, because of uh, who it happens to be against? Uh, it does. It helps. It helps. So, you know, guys want to get this taste out of their mouth. Uh, you know, what better opportunity to have to play at home against uh, a team down the street? So uh, guys are fired up to kind of – now they can – stop thinking about what happened Saturday night and now focus on what could happen this Saturday night. So I, I think that does help, you know, Hey, they really got something they've been looking forward to and everything. So now they're able to flush away what happened Saturday and move forward. So it, it, it definitely helps us. Certainly. And after my question, you don't have to hear about it anymore. Focus. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, Good luck it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll hear about it forever, but just make sure <laughs> don't ask my guys, ask me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. Good luck this way. I appreciate your perspective. Yeah. Our next question comes from Edward Lee. Morning, BT. I was wondering, um, is there anything that you said to JJ after the fumble? Uh, not so. No, here, here's the thing. I, I've had a opportunity to watch this kid grow up. He actually played for me a couple years ago and transferred to me. So I have a personal relationship with him and. Uh, the way I've been coaching him and teaching him all through life is, you know, the, just to persevere through things. So there was a quick conversation, but not not a whole lot. We've, we've talked about stuff like this and been prepared for this before. So uh, he's fine. He's flushed it all out, and then he's moving forward. Uh, he'll, he'll do some special things this week. Be prepared. Would you have any hesitation about going back to him? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Wouldn't, wouldn't think twice about going back to him. Uh, how do you think he will sort of adjust to this? You say adjust to this? Yeah. Uh, he'll continue to do what he's been doing. He'll continue to do what he's been doing, and that, that's make plays and be special uh, like he is and show his talents. But yeah, they, they, he, the kid's not faced. Uh, he's very mature. He's been through things, so... Uh, yeah, it's a tough time, but he he's fine. He, he's fine, and, and again, people will see that this week. Yeah. Last week after the win at Richmond, a lot of talk was about how can the team can continue to extend the momentum from that win. Um, after the loss on Saturday, how does the team make sure that there's no lingering effects from Saturday? Uh, the thing is, you know, like I talked about, it just moving, move forward, move forward. We preach, like I said, the 24-hour rule, whether you uh, win or lose. You know, to move forward and, and keep your focus on, on what's in front of you. So 
again, I think we'll be fine. The guys had a, a, a funny feeling yesterday and after the game, so uh, they don't want to have that feeling. The only way you do it is take care of business uh, this week. So they'll, they'll be fine. Everybody will be good. Thank you. Thank you. Our last question for Coach Sherman this morning comes from The Yard, HBCU Sports. Good morning, Coach Sherman. This is Dwayne Nash from The Yard, HBCU Sports. How are you? All right. I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing good. Um, after this performance on Saturday, will Deuce be the starting quarterback next week, or will it be uh, another QB by committee situation? So so right now, what I, I went into uh, the season – uh, with, with three guys that I thought that were capable of being starting quarterbacks. Uh, I really gave myself uh, two weeks to kind of figure it out because you, you don't have any preseason or anything like that. You want to put guys in the fire and, and see exactly what you have. After the first two weeks, I'm still going back and forth and trying to figure out what, what gives us our best chance uh, to have success. And all three of those guys at some point and then uh, those two weeks have had success. So we, we're just trying to figure out what gives us the best shot. I wouldn't be shocked if I played all three. I wouldn't be shocked if one of them played. Uh, whatever we feel is best for the team, that, that's what we'll do. All right. Thanks uh, Thanks so much, Coach Sherman. Good luck this week. All right. Thank you. There are no more questions for Coach Sherman. Thanks for joining us this morning, Coach Sherman. Best of luck to you and the team. And our thoughts are extended out to Coach Wilson. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Morgan State will take on Towson on Saturday, September 16th at Hughes Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. That game kicks off at 6 p.m. At ES on ESPN+. Plus. This concludes the MEAC Weekly Football Video Conference. Before we end the conference, we would like to thank all of those that assisted in today's conference call. The MEAC would also like to thank its corporate partners for their continued support of the conference and its Elite Eight member institutions. As a reminder, the next video conference is scheduled for Monday, September 18th at 10 a.m. For more information on MEAC football uh, or other sponsored sports, visit meacsports.com and follow the MEAC on social media at MEAC Sports on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. Thank you for tuning in to the MEAC Football Coaches Video Conference and have a great football week.